Good evening, my Re News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this evening, Manchester man charged for allegedly attempting to smuggle cocaine at airport. The police have charged a 53-year-old Manchester man for allegedly attempting to smuggle cocaine on a flight to England at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. Thomas Edwards of Hattifield is charged with the possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, attempting to export a cocaine, and a conspiracy to export a cocaine. He is scheduled to appear before the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday, May 29. The police report that about 5.10 p.m. on Wednesday, May 22, Edwards was stopped by operatives while attempting to board a flight to Heathrow, England. After a preliminary interview, a search of his luggage revealed 4 kilograms of cocaine concealed in false compartments. He was taken into police custody. The police say the estimated street value of the cocaine is a Jamaican $18,744,094.39 99 or 94,345 British pounds. Edwards was interviewed in the presence of his attorney on Friday, May 26, and is subsequently charged. Illegal gun seized in St. Anne, three arrested. Detectives assigned to the St. Anne police on Saturday seized a firearm and several rounds of ammunition following an operation in Tranquility Valley in Brownstown. Reports from the Brownstone police are that about 11.30 p.m., lawmen conducted an operation in the area and the premises was searched. During the search, a Glock 19 pistol with a magazine containing 99mm rounds of ammunition was found inside a concrete structure. Three persons were taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. Prime Minister's uncertified statutory declarations should disqualify him. Golden fires are back. President of the People's National Party, Mark Golding, has said that Prime Minister Andrew Holness should be disqualified from his post due to his uncertified annual declaration. Golding made the comment while speaking at the PNP's Papine Divisional Conference on Saturday at the University of the West Indies. The Prime Minister himself, his annual declarations cannot be certified and published in some reform by the Integrity Commission three years, Golden said. That alone disqualifies him from being Prime Minister, Golden added. Golden told the comrades that the party's performance in the local government elections, coupled with the pending general election, has the ruling Jamaica Labour Party worried. The PNP's back, declared Golden. Them a try and deflect from the real issues of the day, them under whole heap of pressure. The local government elections mash up them vibes because Jamaica showed them that we're serious, he added. According to Golding, the ruling party has run out of ideas. He then added that the mission of his party was to fix a Jamaica. They really have nowhere going. They have been unable to deliver high levels of economic growth. We set economy on a stable trajectory, a stable path, bringing down the public debt. It started under our watch. Enough sacrifice the Jamaican people make for that to happen. Good management, good policies, and they have maintained those fiscal policies to keep the debt coming down. But they can't deliver any kind of growth that can lift up Jamaica from where it is now, to a place where they can really have prosperity, Golden said. Comrades, we have to fix Jamaica. This is our mission. That is our responsibility, Golden added. Golden also used the occasion to reiterate that not only was he born and raised in Jamaica, but had a family legacy through his father that showed his commitment to the country, citing the John Golden Rehabilitation Center and the Hope Valley Experimental School. Special duty exemptions for goods brought into the island for diaspora projects The Jamaica Customs Agency has implemented a special duty exemption for persons bringing tools and goods into the country for diaspora day of service projects on Thursday, June 20. State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Trade, Alanda Terrellong, made the disclosure at a recent Jamaica Information Service think tank where he provided details about the Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference slated for June 16 to 19 at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James. The Diaspora Day of Service marks the conclusion of the conference, allowing attendees to take part in prearranged projects in communities across the island. 
Terry Long informed that several diaspora organizations have already submitted their project proposals. He said that the initiatives range from the refurbishing of former schools by painting or assisting with her computer laboratories to conducting outreach programs and enhancing community parks. He noted that there is a heavy interest on education and health based on the registration of the community projects. Terry Long is urging individuals who have not yet registered their projects to get in touch with the Diaspora Secretariat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Trade to facilitate arrangements with the customs to benefit from the duty exemptions. Persons can also visit the ministry's website via diasporaconferencega.eventbrite.com to complete the day of service registration form with the details of their planned project or to confirm their interest in being a volunteer. Meanwhile, conference chair and the president and the chief executive officer of the VM Group, Courtney Campbell, said that Jamaicans will have the opportunity to volunteer their time and the service at the community projects organized by the diaspora groups. He informed her that the conference's secretariat will be releasing a list of projects to enable individuals to take part in initiatives that align with their interest. We are creating numerous opportunities because the people in the diaspora wanted to get involved in various areas in the Jamaican society and we will be publishing a list ahead of time so persons can select the projects they want to participate in, he said. Welfare and Wellness Branch being proposed for JCF Caesar Commish Police Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake has announced that the Police High Command is mulling the idea of establishing a welfare and wellness branch within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The prospective move is aimed at ensuring that the police force takes care of its members' welfare. The least that we can do to ensure that we take care of the well-being of these members when we put them out there, said Blake, while speaking at the Jamaica Police Federation's 81st Joint Central Conference at Hilton Rose Hall Hotel in Montego Bay, St. James, last week. The commissioner emphasized that the proposed branch will not compete with the Federation's existing efforts but rather build upon them and institutionalize them. We have to get it right, he stressed, acknowledging that the police high command cannot shun its responsibility to its members. Blake also pointed to the GCF operating in an environment with limited resources being available. That means it makes no sense we throw resources from various angles at the same problem. We need to optimize, he declared. While the structure and the details are still being finalized relative to the proposed new branch, Blake assured that the goal is to incorporate everything possible to support the welfare and wellness of police personnel. The reason why I am not saying much more in that light is that we have not yet determined the structure where we can plug into the Police Federation and with our Welfare and Wellness Division that will become a branch, Blake explained. So we have not yet fully fleshed out what the Welfare and Wellness branch will look like. And it's Welfare and Wellness because we want to incorporate everything, the Commissioner stated.